from Ashland, Oregon, home of William Shakespeare and progressive politics, and broadcasting live from the Southern Oregon University Digital Media Center and the RVTV studio. It's the So Not So Late Night Glamour Dave Show and recorded before a non-existent studio audience with a skeletal crew of certified public access producers. You can expect to see tonight's guests, whoever they may be, the Glamour Dave Comedy Players and the Rogue Valley Public Access Orchestra. Now, here's your host, David Glamour Dave Ninao. All right, Road Valley, we're back. This is another edition of the So Not So Late Night Glamour Dave Show, and I'm your host, David Glamour Dave Ninao. So this is segment two of this wonderful live lowbrow public access comedy show, which is now an internationally award-winning comedy talk show as recognized by the Global India International Film Festival just this week. So that's our big, big win for this show. So I... I, I Thank my nine viewers for uh, for your viewing, and so uh, I've got with me uh, Marlon Mason, who is a, uh, a an actress. She's got a long career in Hollywood, and she is uh, notoriously famous for being one of Elvis Presley's uh, 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 leading uh, leading ladies. ladies in the Trouble with Girls. Uh, and was I the was film. his trouble. Yes. 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 Yes, yeah, so I've seen that too. movie a few yes. times. <laughs> Being that I'm a second-generation Elvis fan, and my mother's a first-generation Elvis fan, well, yeah. this is this is a, a really cool moment for my mother and I. This is the closest we'll ever have. Uh, being connected to Elvis. Uh, uh, yes, I'm the closest you'll ever get to Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. So I thank you, Marlon, for coming on hey, to the oh, show. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. So, uh, so you know, I've talked to you before. Uh, at our last uh, SoFam film uh, meeting, yes, and got to kind of uh, learn a bit about your career. You've had a long, extensive career in Hollywood. Very long. <laughs> <laughs> Very long. I started in television, 1949. Yeah. I started entertaining in 45, wow. but my wow. first TV show was in 1949, about a year after TV started. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so, so you've got. Uh, I I'm know an I, old horse. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, you look great. I mean, you know. Yeah, I feel good. <laughs> so. A filly. Got yes, the filly yes. in me. Yeah. <laughs> You're a young filly. Yeah. So, yeah, I was going through like your, uh, your IMDb profile, seeing uh, your long list of like uh, TV show credits from the 60s and the 70s mm -hmm. of shows that I watched as a kid, right? I mean, you were like in, in Banachek and. And Marcus Welby, M.D., and and Hogan's Heroes, and Bonanza. Love American Style, and Bonanza. And, oh my gosh, yes. those were all shows yes. that I used to watch with my parents. And as a Perry kid. Mason, they'd been showing the Perry Mason I did. It was the very last one after nine years, and uh, with Dick Clark. Oh, and exciting. and they've been showing it lately yeah. on on. So a lot of those old shows, um, I'm gaining a younger fan yeah. fan base now. Yeah. Worldwide, actually, so it's kind of fun. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know what? Uh, to, let's get right away into into your story with Elvis, right? Because you got you you started with him in Trouble with Girls. Yes. Right. So, how did you wind up getting that role? Uh, I didn't audition for it. I was just called. My agent was called, and they wanted to know if I was interested in doing a film with Elvis Presley. And because it was difficult for me to get features. Yeah. Um, my manager and I talked about it and said, yeah, I said, I'd, I'd like to do it. I was not a fan of Elvis's. It, it <laughs> doesn't mean I didn't dislike him, but I was into sh Broadway musicals, and I had just come off of a Broadway musical, uh -huh. and I'd only been home a couple of months when I got the Elvis call. Yeah. And um, so I, I believe it was Peter Tewksbury, the director, who wanted me. Years later, I was told that somebody did not want me <laughs> and Peter Tewksbury, who had done already directed two films with Elvis, said, "If you don't use Marlon, I walk," which oh. I thought, "Well, oh, that's yeah. kind of that's nice." Good. But I had yeah. not worked with Peter yeah. that I know of. I don't. He could have directed the Father Knows Best that I did, ah, but that was yeah. one of my real early early shows. That would have been probably fifty nine, right, yeah. fifty nine or sixty, and um, so. 
I did the movie, so yeah. Peter didn't walk. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Peter. Well, but, yeah. but he probably figured, oh, yeah, there's an energy there. There's a vibe you could feel. I can see it. Yeah, oh, well, you mean between me and Elvis? Uh -huh. Oh, he and I were, we couldn't, the, I was prepared not to like him. I thought he was going to be a pain in the butt. <laughs> and I thought he was going to be unprofessional, uh -huh. and he wasn't. He was, he just was perfect. And he was wonderful to act with. He was a good actor. And he and I were like, I always say, I tell my uh, Elvis audiences, we were like two little kids. We just couldn't wait to get outside and play mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. just duke it out together. And it was, it was 10 weeks of just fabulous fun with him. And um, I can toot my horn. Yeah. I was one of three women to have ever recorded with him, and oh. Margaret and Nancy Sinatra. Were the other two? Yeah, some in good awesome. company. Yeah. His song was yeah. terrible. Yeah. The, song, oh, well. the song is just the song is just awful. But well, yeah, it, you know there was. Uh, I got to record with him. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that, yeah awesome. that's cool in yeah. itself. But you know there are there's a lot of really great music in those Elvis movies, but there are some kind of corny kinds of songs well, that this, they did for some of the stories yeah. that they did. Well, it's a long scene and it's quite. It, the song goes on forever, and they keep cutting in and out of it. But it and it took us a few days to shoot it. Yeah. But you think it's all happening at once. Yeah, right. Yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was a fan of Elvis before Elvis became Elvis, because I discovered him as a young girl in junior high, and and I was into Western music. Yeah. And I would buy the Western song magazines. And they had one published, and they had a picture of Elvis. And I went, oh, <laughs> I think I'm in love. Oh, well, you I can don't know. <laughs> oh, well, you can imagine. I got, he, I got him, I think, at his best. Oh, yeah. he was, I was 28. He was 34. Oh, oh. my God. He was, he was stunning. I, 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 everybody couldn't take their eyes off of him. And one of his outfits was a white suit with a pale blue shirt and a white fedora. Oh. And oh God, he, he was just, <laughs> he just made your day. Just, he, <laughs> yeah. would, he caught me many, many times just staring at him. <laughs> He'd just laugh. And I, once in a while I would say, just don't do my close-up, just do, I'm not, I'm not as, I said, I'm not as pretty as you. <laughs> yeah, he just get to laugh, and yeah, it, he was. But he had his eyes and oh. his lips, I mean, he was very just, a uh, very sinuous, handsome, he beautiful was man. He was stunning. Yeah. He was absolutely yeah. stunning. And um, there will never be no, there'll never anybody be. like him. Yeah. I think yeah. they said that about Valentino. Yeah, you know, and his, uh, and his singing abilities are like, I mean, he's the only singer I've ever known that could take someone else's song and make you totally forget about the singer. Oh. I mean, he's done like, you know, he's done yeah. like two or three Sinatra songs, yeah. and you totally forget that Sinatra was the original singer, yeah. because once once Elvis chose to do yeah. Memories, you totally forget that Sinatra, that was his song. You yeah, know? and a lot, I think a lot of it had to do with his acting. He was a wonderful actor, and I think that ability, he just, he had no fear. I mean, you can see it when in his live, per, live performances. Yeah. He, if he forgot a lyric or something, he just went with it. He didn't try to, he yeah. never faked anything. I, fa I found him to be a very, yeah. very courageous and fun act. Out of that, you, yeah. you become fun to work with because yeah. you're not afraid to goof up. Or yeah, well, like his, his, uh, his comeback special, which you yeah. attended, uh, and his Hawaii concert. Those are like two of the most incredible dynamic performances of, by we beautiful We were artists. making, we were filming, um, the trouble with girls, and he called me into his dressing room and one day, and he said, "I'm doing a, I have a special coming on, and I'd I'd like you to watch it and tell me what you think." Mm -hmm. Me tell Elvis what I think. <laughs> but it was I didn't know that the trouble with girls was his next to last movie. Mm -hmm. He had decided no more movies. And then he did one more after that, and that was it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I watched that comeback special. And he, I had told him that I wasn't a fan of his. And <laughs> I mean, not in a, you know, again, not yeah, in just, an unkind yeah, way. Yeah. I just like different music. And uh, I watched that comeback special and I went, I'm working with that every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I went back to work and I said, 
I may not have been a fan, but I am now, and I just, oh, I just fell in love, totally in love with him. I mean, he was, he, uh, he was just amazing. Yeah, he was yeah. a magnificent man. Yeah. I mean, I remember, you know, watching the Ed Sullivan show when he did his first oh, appearance. The, the, oh, yeah. yeah. The naughty, <laughs> the naughty Elvis. Oh, yes, they wouldn't <laughs> let him film me. That was the ways to me. Cover your eyes, place. kids. <laughs> yeah. Go to bed. <laughs> but I can remember watching that. And, of course, I had already, you know, become a fan just from, you know, when he was doing the yeah. country western before he really became Elvis. Yeah. But, yeah, he was, uh, his heart goes pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, they still are. Yeah. yeah, my first exposure actually to Elvis was uh, was when it was in the early 70s and there was, they were had like this, like three album compilation uh, uh, LP special sale thing on, that was they were advertising on TV. Oh, yeah. And that was like, you know, uh, it was like, you know, all those Wonko kinds of things, you know, <laughs> in the 70s. And, and that was the first time I heard Elvis uh, from that commercial. And I thought, oh, wow, this is like, and so then I, I, I asked my parents, I want to, like, get that album, you know, and uh, set, and, and my mother said, it's, it's genetic, you know, it was like, you know, <laughs> I had no idea that she was an Elvis fan, right? I'm just seeing this ad for these El Elvis LPs, and, 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 I, and that's like my first exposure to them, and then from that point on, it was like, you know, uh, oh. Elvis fan forever. Well, I you bet know? you two had fun together. Oh, with that. Yeah. yeah. Well, as, as a teeny bopper and young girl through, you know, junior high and high school and stuff, my bedroom was wall-to-wall -wall Elvis pictures. I mean, I, I lived with Elvis. <laughs> you and thousands of other women yeah, right. who yeah. still are. I've been in some homes there. It's all Elvis. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you know, the fan club. And then uh, when I got married, I turned it all over to my sisters. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Passed oh, it along. <laughs> I've, I've been in some houses where the husbands just have to live with Elvis. I mean, it's, oh, yeah. the dude ain't dead. <laughs> no. Well, in addition to your, uh, to all your connection with Elvis, uh, and all your all your uh, work, you you had mentioned to me before that you had been on Johnny Carson a couple of times. Twice. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I could have done a third show. Mm -hmm. It was probably the stupidest decision I ever mm -hmm. made in my life. I was in New York, and they had closed the show, and an actor named Dak Rambo was renting my subletting my little house in Hollywood yeah. and he had to find a place to live so I'm stuck in New York till he finds a place to live Dan Rowan owned the little house from oh. Dan Rowan from Lapham yeah. Yeah. He, I, I rented the house so yeah. and he didn't care I, Dan was wonderful so uh, I was stuck in New York and while I was there um, I was told Johnny Carson wanted to know is Mason still funny <laughs> and uh, they called me up and they said, he wants you for another show. And I had shipped all my clothes home and I was literally living like a beatnik. It was 19, what, 60? Yeah, the beatniks were still around yeah. in the mm -hmm. 60s, weren't yeah. they? Mm -hmm. Or whatever we were called. And I was sort of in my little beatnik phase and I had, I mean, I looked terrible. I'd put on a little weight. I didn't, I, I, and I was tired from doing the, the Broadway show. And I turned it down. I think, oh, just oh. the most stupid thing. <laughs> because I think I could have ended up, he and, he was like with Elvis, he yeah. and I just, we just clicked. Yeah. And I was a good foil for him on mm. his show. And anything that we, we planned to talk about, we never ended up talking yeah. about. So we never knew what we were gonna do, <laughs> those, those two shows. Yeah. And uh, so I'll never know, but I could have probably ended up being one of those uh, gals that came around yeah. every few months just to yeah you yeah know, to keep yeah. up and see what mm -hmm. we were doing and to have some fun with him but oh, it was just a stupid and, and those episodes have, have become lost right because well my, I was told that both uh, because that the ones I did were both at what within a six month period mm -hmm. and that they ended up in a fire at NBC mm -hmm. well I'm, I'm just gonna I'm gonna tell you right now that I'm going to do something better than, than Johnny Carson in that I'm going to guarantee to you that you have three appearances this year on the So Not So Late Night Glamour Day Show so I can be one up 
on Johnny <laughs> Carson <laughs> in my talk show <laughs> host career. Well, I have a lot to talk about. Yeah. You can ask so me I know a that lot, for a fact. So. <laughs> a lot of questions. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you're good to go for two more appearances on this show <laughs> okay. this year. Okay, the year is young. That's right. So, okay. you know, at least two more appearances. Okay, I'm going to hold you to yeah, it. Yes, okay. yes, a promise. I'm making that promise live, Road Valley. Okay, so, you heard it. Yeah. Witnesses. That's right. Yeah, so <laughs> I want to surprise you with that little. Oh, well, thank you very you know, much. So, I will be yeah, honored. Well, it's, you know, it's, it's you know, it's, it's a Glamour Dave thing, you know, yes. doing that kind of thing. So. Yes. Yeah, his father <laughs> always worked a, a graveyard shift or a night shift. So Johnny Carson and I were very oh, close because yeah. that was a show I watched yeah. every night. He was, yeah, he, he was. Oh, uh, you, I loved I, him. He you, was you so don't funny. You don't meet him before you do the show. You meet him on the show. Yeah, it's all and fresh. I was nervous. I was a nervous wreck. and. I remember the AD, I, I came out and I had to sing a song and I almost fell on my, uh, uh, and I, 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 my foot went up and I caught myself and I'm right in the camera singing yeah. this stupid song. And uh, I got through and the AD takes me over and sets me down and my heart's going like this. And Ed McMahon took a hand and jo Johnny took a hand. They said, calm down, you're okay. And then Johnny, Johnny leaned into me and said, did you almost fall on your ass out there? <laughs> and I said, yeah. And he said, good recovery. <laughs> <laughs> and that just kind of started us out after the, they came back from commercial. We just, I, I had a, a dress on and the collar, I would turn this way, the collar would go up. And then I'd turn over to Ed and the collar would go down. <laughs> well, the camera moved in on Johnny because he's, Watching my collar going, going up, going up. <laughs> and so, that? so, and I'm yapping on about something, and then he said, he said, do you know that when you're talking, your collar goes up and down? And I was talking about men, and I said, so I, so just, I just said, well, the collar gets excited when I tell these stories, and well, that that just sent us off in a direction oh, yeah. that. I'm surprised they didn't yeah. X us off the show, oh, but it man. was fun. Yeah, it was. So that now, was great. So now, what brought you to the Road Valley after this long career in Hollywood? My car died. <laughs> okay. My agent died, <laughs> oh. and I said to myself, "Dead car, dead agent, dead career." I was 53. Uh, not a lot of work for women at 53, regardless of my credits. Yeah. And uh, my best friend, who we grew up together since we were five years old, had a guest house here in Medford. Mm. And it was built for her parents. And when they died, she called me up and she said, if you ever need a roof over your head, or you, you want to get out of Hollywood, whatever, she said, you always have a home here. And I never oh, thought, I always awesome. thought I would work. Yeah. She always, she, we never thought I would leave LA. Yeah. And, uh, so when those deaths happened, <laughs> I called her up and I said, is your guest house empty? And she said, it will be July 18th. Why? I said, I'm coming up. That was 1993. Yeah. Wow. So I brought my little dog up and crossed over the border and said, it's a new life. Never look back. Yeah. And um, it was just a series of events that it's too long to tell yeah. you, but through a series of events, I met um, a fellow named Ray Robison, who's a local film yes, director. That's right, I know, Ray. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I had written something, and I sent it to him, and he called me. And we'd been having coffee. We'd oh, we'd known each other about three years, and we'd have coffee and talk business and you know stories and things. And um, so I sent him this little thing I called Model Rules, and he called me up and he says, "We got to do this." And that was nineteen at uh, nineteen. That was 2007, and I got here in 93, so that tells you how long yeah, it took. Yeah. And, uh, and I had made two movies for television in Portland when I first moved here, but that, that didn't turn into anything. Yeah. And uh, so, but, but since Ray and I made the little short model rules, we've been making films together, yeah. which we're doing one now. That's right. A and we have one that's coming in for all of you nine people. Yeah. <laughs> if you go to the Ashland. Yay! Six of them are here clapping. That's right, yeah, that's right. Um, 
We are in the Ashland Film Festival this year with our, our short uh, film noir uh, called An Affair Remains, and we are making a prequel to it as I speak. We, we're going to film that in May, and Ray is going to combine, and that's called Remains to be Seen, and he's going to put the two together and make a pilot out of it for a series called Remains. Mm -hmm. And for oh. you nine people, yeah. I want you to get, I want you to dig into your purses and your pockets and your wallets for money and go to Kickstarter and type in Remains Film Noir Series and donate Sell your house and donate. So <laughs> this can be done. Yes. 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 Sell yes. something and donate. Yeah. So we can get our so we can pay our crew. Yes, <laughs> yes we can yeah. get this movie. Yes. We, well yes. we have a fabulous crew and we pay them when we can. Yeah. And when we don't, they are they work for nothing because we have a really good uh, almost professional. Yeah, well group. there's a good film community here yeah. in Southern Oregon. Yes, there is. And uh, you know, it, we're, you and I are both members of the local film Southern mm -hmm. Oregon group. And uh, yeah, it's a great, wonderful uh, film community. It's very supportive of yeah. each other. Well, Oregon is a wonderful place to film. It's very film friendly, yeah. and uh, a lot of lot of companies are coming here now. So, yeah. well, that's one thing about here in the studio and and what we do. It's all volunteer, and yeah. you know, it's just a wonderful group of people. And it's yeah, you kind of get it in your blood. Oh and you yeah, just, it's yeah, it's just fun to do. It's exciting. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, everyone's supportive each other. They all help each other, and well, that's it. It's it is. It's a family effort. Mm -hmm. it, it really mm -hmm. is. When you when yeah. you're doing even doing television, going from do when I was doing episodic TV, and you'd go from show to show to show. You it would take one day to kind of adjust to that the family that had uh -huh. been working together. Let's say Bonanza, yeah. and then by the second day, you're just you one know, of the family. Yeah, you're one just of the one family. of them, and it's and it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and I've got a really wonderful group of uh, volunteer producers here at the studio yeah. that come and help on all my yeah. stuff. Thank you. And, and, and they and they tolerate my Costco food that 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 I that I reward <laughs> and pay them with. So that's so you know. Hey, Costco's not, Costco does a lot of my cooking. Yeah, they've yeah. got the best chickens. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. those roasted so, chickens. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. So you those know. things last me a week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will tell you, my little Yorkie. She loves chicken, and so I buy her the organic roasted chickens, mm -hmm. and that's what she eats. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Lucky dog. Yes. <laughs> yes. At ten bucks a chicken. That's, yeah, but know. it's a Yorkie. How long can that last? That's like <laughs> two spoonfuls. Exactly. So it's every day is you know a ten dollar bill to get the dog fed in its chicken. So. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a family issue. Yes. <laughs> but I don't, I'm not going to be in the middle of it. <laughs> uh, well, we're down to the last five minutes. So now's the time oh. to, uh, we can do, uh, we can quickly get a message to Garth Brooks in, and then we can do the interview wrap-up with my little comedy options. So if Control Room can bring up my message to Garth uh, graphic, and I will... Send my uh, latest message to Garth regarding his, uh, this is like my suggestion to him for his theme parks, musical theme parks that he does on his serious radio show. And so he puts like three songs together uh -huh. for under a theme idea. And I always give mess, uh, message to Garth with a recommendation of three songs for him to consider for his theme park element in his radio show with the idea that eventually he's going to contact me and I'm going to do a Skype interview with Garth Brooks on my show. That's the idea. So, so far, far, he hasn't contacted So far, <laughs> He's no contact. On. But I keep trying. I'm a very trying person at times. Well, do you try differently? Or is it the same well, try? It's, it's the well, same. it's the same approach. And then I Twitter it on my Twitter and connect to his official Twitter and his wife's official Twitter. Well, you know. well put me in on there. I'll tell so, you. Come on, so, well, yeah. so this is this program? week's message to Garth. And my theme park suggestion is all about Memphis number two, because I also did a previous All About Memphis selection a few weeks earlier. So uh, so this, the three songs this week are Trisha Yearwood's Wrong Side of Memphis, Paul Simon's Graceland, and Elvis's Guitar Man. Those are all three songs that, that all are about Memphis. Okay, well, Elvis is channeling me. Yes. And he's telling me 
Gar, contact this man. Yeah. Yes. Now. That's okay. right. Yeah. Now so we'll see. So yeah. now. We'll see how much influence that yeah. has. Yes. <laughs> so now, so now to wrap up. Well, the, show Garth the Elvis statue. Well, because I my, always tell Garth, you know, oh, if he yeah, would that. play more Elvis, <laughs> I would listen to his channel. But every time I get in the car, I switch into Elvis. Stupid. I know. Well, I've got Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> so that's my little Elvis statue from 1977 that came oh, out after. That's your little, you know, all your little toys there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's a glamour day thing. Now, if you played bingo, those would be your good luck charms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So now we have players get a chance charms, to huh? do, uh, we can have an awkward moment, okay. or you can toot your own horn, and uh, where's my horns? So, so these are like the horns, a cheap $1 horn to toot your own horn by, or you can try and win the small cash prize of 100 pennies. Can I do all three? We could certainly do that if we got time. What's the, God, Mike, what's the time that we got left? You have one minute and 30 seconds. Oh, wow. Oh, so, oh well, we've got time, right? Okay. Well, now, uh, well, we've got time for one. We'll, <laughs> one, we, oh, we, okay, I was just awkward. We were just awkward. Yeah. Okay, so give me the horn. Okay. <laughs> okay, all right, and toot my horn. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong end. Wrong end. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you go. Oh, there you go. Okay, all right, now. <laughs> now we want to Now give me, the, give me the... The small cash prize. You have to answer a trivia question. Oh, God. Okay. And you get to take the horn with you. Oh, it's yours. Yeah, you get to keep that the horn. That is yours. Okay. So categories are Harry Potter, Doctor oh. Who, oh. or the 90s. Oh, the 90s. Okay. All I right. am, I'm almost 90. <laughs> All righty. So. I'm right behind you. The I following know. question comes to us via Gmail from the show's ancestral home of the Ninao clan in Mapleton, Minnesota. Crater Lake is the fifth oldest national park in the United States and the only national park in Oregon. The lake is 1,949 feet deep at its deepest point, making Crater Lake the deepest lake in the United States and the ninth deepest in the world. Your trivia question is, what retired politician celebrated his 75th birthday with a parachute jump, then observed, old guys can still do stuff? George Bush. That's right. Yay! That's right. Woo! That's the answer. And you win the small cash prize of 100 pennies. And, I, and, and, and Ray Robinson, I want him to know I, I'm going to contribute. Yeah, to Ray, <laughs> Ray will appreciate yes, that. Yes, yes. Yeah. I have Ray on my show in November, so. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, appreciate and thank that. you. Yeah. And, and come to the Ashland Film Festival in April. That's April right. 11th through the 15th. Uh, our movie is showing uh, Friday and Saturday nights. Well...